Hi, I'm Robin White from Fantasy Wire, and I'm the guy that makes the wire fairies. In this section, now that we've got a skeleton with hands and feet, what we want to do is start bulking out the figure into the shape of the fairy. But we're not going to add wire to the, the skeleton and build it up layer by layer. What we're going to do is take the main areas, like the rib cage and the thighs, and we're going to try and get to the shape of the finished fairy as fast as possible in the least amount of wire. And this stage I call a low density cage. Uh, it's just going to be try to get that shape. I'm not trying to use to create structure in terms of strength because that's all done. This skeleton is strong enough to take its own weight. All of the tight things are done. It's just build a cage around this figure, starting with the the rib cage and the thighs where most of the sort of bulk in a figure is. I probably won't add very much to her arms at all in the early stages. It's just get to that shape. And then as we start to build her out, as the shape starts to form, we'll add more wires in higher frequency. So I'll add maybe up to eight wires at a time and the wire will get tighter and I'll worry about the detail more. But the first stage is this low density cage so I'm just going to start by building out a little bit of the, the rib cage. Like I say, you build out the rib cage, build out the thighs early on. Take the wire through, put it through anywhere to roughly the, the mid point, And then just start to sort of layer this wire in, sort of bulk, bulk out the figure. So I've got hardly, well, no tension on it at all. I'm actually trying to create the shape of the fairy figure. So her rib cage is going to be in front of her spine. So I'll start to sort of build this out, just extremely loose loops. I'm just using the skeleton as something to sort of hold this lumps of wire to, in place. There's no tension on it whatsoever. Don't need pliers. Just wrap it round and sort of bulk out in the area where this rib cage would be. Not worried about the texture. I'm only worrying about where the meat on this figure should be. Build out the buttocks. So now that we've got a semblance of a rib cage, something that I do, which I'm not suggesting anybody else should, is I've got a little pebble that I've just signed my name on and put the date on. And I'm going to put that inside the rib cage like a little stone heart. And then just wrap some wire around it so it can't escape. Getting the, the head size and position is, is a sort of tricky one. When, you, when you're doing the skeleton, the neck seems incredibly long because all you've got is a loop on the end of a sort of four, four and a half inch sort of stem. And it looks sort of ridiculously long compared to the size of the figure. As soon as you get some bulk to the head, you realize that the neck isn't, uh, isn't that long. It's the right size. But what I've got the opportunity to do now is, as I sort of flesh it out, gauge whether the neck is still too, looks too long. So I can add meat to the top of the head to move the neck up or I can add meat to the bottom of the, the head to sort of bring the, so I'm sort of varying where the sort of bulk of the head is as I'm sort of fleshing the head out to make sure that the neck is the sort of right length of the, the figure. So up to now, I've been adding 
two strands of 1.6 and I've been adding it very loosely to sort of create a cage. If I was to sort of pick her up, it, there's very little weight there. In terms of percentage of her finished weight, she's probably at about 15%. Uh, although I'm sure from the camera's point of view, it looks like she's at that shape and that's because there's very little density of wire and I've tried to sort of build out the shape of her using that stronger wire and the stronger wire gives me a frame because each individual wire now that they're sort of locked in is quite strong in the short sort of lengths that, that it it uh, that it runs over so that gives me a frame to now start adding some smaller wire so i'm going to change to four strands of 1.2 in terms of volume of wire it's probably about the same amount of wire that i'm adding as the two strands of 1.6 so I'll still have that cage but more of the surface will be covered but other than that it's it's just the same process as we were doing before uh, with this wire I may start to go down the back of the leg to fill out the the calves a bit uh, the back of the calves I'll add a little bit to the arms uh, just to sort of give us a bit of meat there because this is sort of softer and it won't be so hard if I need to sort of reshape them. Uh, but other than that, it, I'll probably as well just go back into sort of time lapse and add some of this wire uh, until I get to the next stage. I've stopped the time lapse because I, I want to sort of make an, an adjustment that isn't just adding the wire. Uh, one of the sort of rules that I sort of laid out earlier was get the skeleton right uh, and don't add wire to it until you're happy with the skeleton. And that, that rule stands. But part of the skeleton that isn't present in the wire frame that we put together was the sort of shape of the head. And that doesn't manifest itself until you've got enough sort of volume there. Uh, now, one of the design features that I mentioned when we was talking about design is an awful lot of the emotion comes from the angle of the wrists and the neck. Uh, now, when we put the skeleton together, all we got was a stalk with a sort of loop on it where the head was going to be. But now that I've got the head, I'm going to adjust the angle of the neck to add a little bit of more, more emotion. At the moment, it's just straight. And that was the easiest way for me to sort of form it until I could see where the chin was and where the sort of shape of the skull was. Uh, as you're sort of building it out, it's just a ball until you sort of put the chin on. Uh, but now I can see the direction of that skull. So what I'm going to do is actually bend it while I still can. Tip it back a little bit so she's looking a bit more up and slightly to one side. And that's the only adjustment I'm going to make. But that makes an awful lot of difference in terms of bringing her to life rather than representing a human form. So I've added quite a few strands of the 1.2. It's bulked her out. She's got a head sort of bulked out in the right sort of shape. I've added weight to the arms. I haven't added any detail to the arms, but what I have done is add a sort of taper. So the arms are sort of thicker at the top and I haven't added anything to the wrists. But I'm about to change wire and go down to uh, one uh, to point 0.9 of a mil but i'm actually going to add eight strands so it's still quite a volume of wire so it's going to be still adding volume but it's a lot smoother it will cover a lot more of the surface and i'm going to add a lot more tension to the, to the wire so i'm not actually trying to create shape now what i'm trying to do is smooth out the shape while it's still sort of building up 